God, mm -hmm. I'm willing to give up my happiness. I don't need love in my life. I don't need friends. I know this is extreme, wow. but just let me carry out this mm -hmm. mission wow, and wow. I'll be happy. Please subscribe and turn on your notifications to stay tuned to the latest updates at The Powder Room Talk. Hello, I'm JJ Liu. Welcome to The Powder Room with me and my girlfriends, Viola Mananta and Regina Wijaya. The Powder Room is where it gets real. And today we're going to talk about the meaning of forgiveness and boundaries. With us today is Chinta Laura Keel, our dear friend, an actress and singer who has been in the entertainment industry ever since her youth, and she had garnered a lot of significant success in Indonesia. But behind all that glitz and glamour is the journey of a beautiful young woman facing all sorts of different struggles. And today, that makes it very exciting for us to unpack this topic with Chinta. So, well, come on into the powder room. Thank you so much for being on the show with us today. We're really excited to have you here. And um, to be honest, I think the topic today was inspired from a talk that we had end of 2020. Um, you know, we were in a cafe and we were recapping our 2020. <laughs> and um, we talked about a few things that really mattered to us in that year and really changed us in that year. And I, I remember you were talking about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I really want to go into this topic with you today because there's so many things that, that, that are not perceived the right way or maybe are misunderstood about what forgiveness means. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited that we talk about this today. Um, maybe a little bit of background about mm -hmm. you which I think most people most don't people know, know because everyone knows <laughs> yes. Chinta yes. Laura. No, no, yeah. no, no, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, yeah, so you grew up in Germany and several other countries yeah. before actually coming to Indonesia. Yeah. And um, when you were about 12, you came to Indonesia and you straight away actually became quite um, famous in the entertainment industry. You were playing TV series. You mm -hmm. even had your own show. <laughs> That's how I know Where you. Where we met. Yes. Yes. And if you guys are curious as to what show it was, yeah. it was called Gal Barang Bule. Gal so she was a bule. Maybe we should check it out on YouTube. Yes, we should check it out on YouTube. Is it still available? Me neither. I don't know. Is it still available? I have no idea. I'm going to search about it. Maybe there is. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Check out, you know, teenage me and early 20s. Very short hair. Yeah. She had a pixie cut. Yeah. Pixie cut. I thought oh. she was like a was model watching. from Germany oh. or something. <laughs> That's what my husband thought when he yeah. was Apparently. It was <laughs> all a show. No. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's where we met. And then after that, you actually you went to the States to study um, psychology and German literature mm -hmm. in Columbia University. And then you actually started your career in the States. You, um, you were acting there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you actually build your life and career, and then you came back to Indonesia in 2019. So for today, the hotel has prepared for us some fantastic food. Like they really brought out their best selection. And I just love that some of these items are actually really healthy because our guest star today really loves healthy food. Um, so we have some finger food and one of my favorites, and I love the dressing, is the green goddess salad. Um, and here we have some sous vide salmon with um, uh, turmeric coconut sauce. And for dessert, we're having organic Balinese chocolate with hazelnut friantine, palm sugar meringue, sursop, and edible flowers. It looks so beautiful and it's really delicious. Thank you, Ayana, for serving us your best food. What, what actually, you know, what moved you to come back, mm. to come back here? Oh, I think this is going to be a long story to tell <laughs> and we'll have to really delve into it throughout the show. Mm. But the, 
I had my first big epiphany, so to speak, in 2018. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where I don't know what happened, but overnight I suddenly realized, wait a minute, you know, this world is globalizing. Technology is becoming more advanced. Mm -hmm. Why am I so focused on building my career here when there's so much I could do back in my home country? Not only in the, in the entertainment industry, mm. but also um, on a social level. Yeah. And so in 2018, I suddenly had the inclination to want to move back. But it wasn't until 2019 mm -hmm. where, where I felt extremely ready. And the reason being was because after having spent eight years in the U.S., um, there was mm. something that really stuck out to me. And that was how they would treat victims of uh, sexual violence and abuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, in many uh, first world countries, although it's not perfect, I'm not saying their justice system is perfect yeah. at all, yeah. but in most first world countries, when you become a victim of abuse or violence, uh, the government would uh, provide you with free lawyers. Okay. So free legal help. Mm -hmm. Social workers would literally be coming at you to help you recuperate mentally, physically, mm -hmm. and on every level of life, so mm -hmm. to speak. Wow. And then it occurred to me that although I know those services exist here too, I mm -hmm. think if I'm not mistaken, according to statistics, only 10% of victims in this country actually report injustices yeah, that and have happened spoke to them. Up, and out of the 10%, only 1% actually end up going to court mm. and oh, at least crazy. trying to fight for the justice they yeah. deserve. Yeah. So I thought to myself, although there are already so many amazing activists in this country, there's mm. no reason why there can't be one more. Mm. Yeah, I do believe true. there is strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. And with the large platform I have and yes. the amazing career God has bestowed, I felt the need and the obligation to come back because you know even if things don't change drastically in my lifetime i do believe that there is something i can yes, do yeah. at least like that. that first step yeah um that first step to move in a better direction because think yeah. about it you know, let's let's think about it in a calculative manner. 50% mm -hmm. of this country, 50% mm -hmm. of this world consists of women. women. Yes. If yeah, they don't grow true. up in a stable environment, if they don't live yeah, in a exactly. happy environment, how can they be productive members of society? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to think about it from an economic standpoint, you know, this country's GDP can increase tremendously yes. if women are given the same opportunity. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, take away, you know, that greedy side of <laughs> human nature <laughs> and just think about uh, human rights. Yeah. I think as human beings, we all deserve a stable, happy life, regardless yeah. of your gender, because at the end of the day, gender means absolutely nothing. Even the roles that have been bestowed to mm -hmm. us by uh, society are all social constructs. Yeah. Mm, you know, yeah. who is to say, for example, yeah. that women must wear dresses? Who oh, is to say yeah. that women must cook? No. But we can. <laughs> but we can. <laughs> but we can. Yeah. But we, can. <laughs> we work it, but essentially, um, yeah, so, you know, I've always, I've, I've always been around very strong, mm. independent mm. women, yeah. and I felt like Indonesia needs more role models that make women believe that they can achieve whatever they want in life. And it's yeah. true, there are no limits. You create your own limitation. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, Ibu Susi Puji Astuti once told me, liberate your mind. Yeah, yeah. true. You know, at yeah. the end of the day, you can do anything as long as you don't limit yourself. And limitations only exist in the mind. Yeah. Mm. The war in our mind. Yeah, yeah. the war is in your mind. Yeah. You know? yeah. I struggle with that a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what, yeah. what, when you, so it was 2019 when you actually moved back yeah, here, right? July 1st, 2019, oh, I landed. Even, wow. it, yeah, because it was such a pivotal point in my yeah. life. And I was still going through some sort of internal struggle because okay. a part of me knew mm. that my true calling in life, my true purpose mm -hmm. is to use my platform, to use my fame yeah. to help others. Like it was the first time in my life where I wasn't just thinking about me. Mm. Before that, mm, it was good. always me, 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 me. How can I get ahead? How can I be number one? How can I be above everything else? <laughs> but that's, I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy when all I was doing was trying to strive for perfection and strive for uh, 
a rank, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was when I realized that I could use my powers for good to help those who can help themselves, yeah. that's when I realized, yeah. oh, this is actually cathartic. This is yeah. actually making me feel whole. Correct. Yeah. And so the internal struggle was, I knew that I needed to do that, yep. but the other part of me was like, all my friends, people I call my second family, so mm -hmm. to speak, mm -hmm. live in the U.S. Okay. So okay. I had to leave my social life behind, and this yeah. sounds really grim, and this is the first time I've ever stated it on camera, actually. Yes. But I remember telling myself a few weeks before moving back to Indonesia was, God, mm -hmm. I'm willing to give up my happiness. I don't need love in my life. I don't need friends. I know this is extreme, wow. but just let me carry out this mm, mission, wow, and wow, I'll be happy. Wow. And wow, I'm gonna that, cry. That, <laughs> that, 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 and and Alexina and I, I really love that we get to have this conversation today because I think, you know, very often you don't get to share. You know, yeah. we don't get to have these like really real talks and share this yeah. kind of like. <laughs> 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 you know, and 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 I really yeah. wonder, you know, to make such a pivotal decision in your life, and to come back to a place mm -hmm. that is home but or, or on a journey to really be, you know truly become a place of home for mm -hmm. you where you just said like most of your second family and your closest friends are you know yeah. elsewhere mm -hmm. you know and and how did that how did you yeah, yeah how did that make mm -hmm. that make you feel and yeah. and yeah it was very hard i remember the first year i moved back to indonesia uh, i would see viola maybe like once a month we'd have <laughs> breakfast or lunch dates mm -hmm. and you know and i remember bule chichi. the bule yeah. chichi. <laughs> Well. <laughs> exactly. Um, I would always be venting, and I realized that all I would do was tell her how miserable I was. And even though I was aware of it, and I would always tell Viola, I'm so sorry, I'm complaining, I'm so sorry, I'm venting. She had always been such a good friend, and she would always tell me it was okay. Thank you. Um, but it took the pandemic, meaning this past year, 2020, yes. for me to finally grow on a mental, spiritual, and emotional level. Mm. It was because of the amount of time I had to contemplate and reflect that I realized what had actually been going on the last eight mm -hmm. years I had been living abroad. Yes, I went to the U.S. to pursue my education mm -hmm. and, you know, attain the best education possible. Mm -hmm. Yes, I went to the U.S. because I had always been truly passionate about my craft, that being acting and mm. singing, but predominantly acting. Yeah. Yeah. But what I realized was, I didn't need to spend eight years in the U.S. I could easily have done what I did in the U.S. here because with technology, I can always do my auditions first via a self-tape yes, that I true. send to my agents back, yeah. in the U.S. And yeah. then if, you know, if I move on to the next round, I could just, fly, just fly to the U.S. Yeah. I lived in the U.S. for eight years because, and this is something I realized last year around June or uh, June, July, August, I was running away. I was going to ask, were you running from away? The from the emotions, emotions. Okay. that I felt every time I would set foot in this country. And I only realized this also in November of 2020 because I know Viola, Viola saw a major shift in my behavior and um, mannerism when mm. she met me in December. It's yeah. like something changed. changed yeah. I noticed that too, um, yeah. But I remember I would come to Indonesia two to three times a year between 2011 to 2019 to shoot ads, to film movies, yeah. mm -hmm. to do work essentially. Yeah. But every time I would step out of the plane, I would feel as if I was on the brink of a panic attack. Was there like a weight on you? Uh, hold on, it's okay. getting there. <laughs> And at the time, I didn't have a house in Jakarta because my parents had moved to Bali already, so we would always stay at a hotel in the city yeah. center. Mm. And unless I was working, I did not want to leave my room. Mm. Because every time I would s walk out of my room, I felt immediately that people were analyzing my looks, judging my behavior, mm. judging my words. And it was scary, and I realized that that's what I realized that's why I always appeared unpleasant to people, or angry, or unfriendly. Yeah. But it wasn't because I didn't want to be friendly or happy or sweet. Yes. I was just too in my head, and too like my heart would be racing every time mm -hmm. I would leave the room. That I, I it was hard for me to smile. Mm. And the reason for that, uh, for those negative emotions, is because of the trauma I had experienced early in my career. That being people supposedly making fun of my accent. Although I've, now that I'm an, an adult, I realize that a lot of them actually found it 
you know, entertaining, and they love that about me. Yeah. Uh, as, as a 12-year-old, yeah. 13-year-old child, yes. how I perceived their uh, reactions was that I thought they were mocking me, mm -hmm. making fun of me, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and it made me angry. And now, I mean, I'm so, uh, it's so nice to hear that, you know, for example, Viola's kids are blessed because even though they're mixed race, yes. it's so normal to speak English 24-7 and even Indonesian kids yeah. now speak <laughs> English better than they speak Indonesian. Yeah. But I guess <laughs> when I first surfaced into the scene, it wasn't common. I'm mm -hmm. sure it existed. I'm sure there are plenty out there. Mm. They were just not exposed to the entertainment industry. So yeah. it seemed like my situation was an anomaly, although it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that was really tough for me because obviously the the cyberbullying I experienced yes. from the masses also translated to like verbal bullying at school. Verbal bullying at school. Absolutely, wow. absolutely. So what would they say? Like <laughs> the accent what, probably. When they were bullying you, what what would it be like? Like so give an bule. example. So bule. They're like so bule, and I'm like, but yeah. my dad is bule, so I'm yeah. not being so bule. Like half yeah. of what I am is. European. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. No, but you know but, but I, mean? I, I do I do remember because probably we said Lola and JJ, I was growing up in Indonesia, yeah. so I remember those those moments and um, before this talk was actually happening and I heard from Lola on how much it hurt you as a mm -hmm. teenager. You know, for us who, mm -hmm. who was just like um, observing. observing, we never realized on how much our words could um, could hurt people, you know, and, and I feel yeah. I feel bad for you. Yeah. Now I know. Because maybe at those times, I would be one of the person who think, oh, this lady, the same, probably, I'm so sorry, so bullet at that time, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, without we even realizing she, she was half German and she just moved back to Indonesia. Of course, she couldn't speak Indonesian language, you know, the, the understanding was not there. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry to you, you know, on behalf of my friends, or probably, mm -hmm. you know, I would like to apologize if it oh. hurts you so much in a way. Because I think um, people do not realize on how much it hurts people when you, when you say it, um, Publicly, right? Yeah. I even cry. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just like, I, I think like maybe it's just the virtue of this topic. Like, you mm -hmm. know, we want to unpack like forgiveness yeah. and setting up boundaries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I first and foremost, you know, I just really want to say I feel very proud of you that you mm -hmm. are using your influence and you know, like you know, you know, you have a voice, and I love like how on social media. And I noticed the growth also yeah. <laughs> um, um, in you, even the pastures and how you shared and the messages and the interviews that you do. There is that change because if something happened on the inside mm -hmm. of you and your conversation starts evolving. And um, I love that you, you now, you know, you try to mm -hmm. shift the conversations to encourage Indonesian women to speak up about all those issues yeah. that you said, like human rights, mm -hmm. abuse, bullying, you know, bullying and, and, and I noticed that you started to um, separate Instagram accounts. Yes. Yeah, I would like to learn mm. more about that. Like it's one is yeah. a Surat Surat Dari Cinta. Dari Cinta, yeah? yeah, and then Puella. Puella dot dot official, but the company is actually Puella ID. Okay. So Surat Dari Cinta is a, a, a branch actually uh, of you know the path that I'm trying to move towards. So Surat Dari Cinta is essentially going to be a book, mm -hmm. a book about bullying. Oh. And uh, right now we're actually gathering people's experiences and what they're sharing because they will be curated and included in the mm, book as okay. well. But what's lacking in Indonesia is the awareness of the fact yeah. that what they're saying or what yeah. they do can often hurt people. Yeah. Sometimes mm. the reaction I hear from people is, ah, but all the sensitive aja, like, mm. you know, yeah. like, like the take usual a joke. things, right? And it's like, I'm sorry to say, yeah. but you don't understand. Like, yeah. there are some people who would have been through what I went through and would have not survived. And yes. I mean mm. that in the most morbid way possible. You know yes. what I mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so this book not, will not only define the types of bullying that exist, mm -hmm. it's basically a platform where you can share and hopefully help one another figure out how to rise above the negative experiences mm -hmm. yeah. and move forward. That's Surat Dari Cinta. Uh, the second uh, platform is called Puala.id. Okay. And essentially what I'm trying to do is create an entertainment platform that's not just about me. Eventually I want people to partake and have their own shows and own programs, mm -hmm. but it's catered to uh, the youth. So mm -hmm. right now I, I'd say my, the demographic is like 12 to 24 or 25 so okay. gen z's mm -hmm. and every episode has a specific topic that we mm. uh intend on delving into that okay. being um toxic relationships self-love eating disorders mm. 
perhaps uh, certain types of mental illnesses, um, the environment, mm -hmm. um, identity crisis. Um, so yeah. things that are very relevant, to especially teenagers nowadays, yeah. now that they're exposed to so much information. And I just actually released my first episode uh, this past weekend. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. you. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it going to be it's on YouTube? YouTube? It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Okay. It's on YouTube. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. We just started, so right now it's just my program. But basically, it's a show that tries to uh, transfer positive values oh, to kids so in a simple manner. Yeah. You know, I'm never going to communicate a certain idea in a complex manner because otherwise, one, kids will lose interest yes. and two, mm -hmm. they'll be like, what the hell is she talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, questions will be asked in a very surface level manner, but it's actually mm. a step-by-step -step approach to understand a more complex issue. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, my, my vision is that with the guest stars I invite all being, you know, very prominent uh, in their field, yeah. you know, we'll have fans who think, oh, if I want to be like my idol, I need to behave this yeah. way. If I want to be like my idol, I need to mm -hmm. have this point mm -hmm. of view. I need to think like this. Mm -hmm. oh, so it's all good. about positive um, value transfer because with, with our power, it's our responsibility yes. to make sure that media provides education. And in this country, yeah. especially TV, what you no. see most of the time is slapstick comedy. So, I was yeah. going to say, Indonesia is very comedy. slapstick yeah. comedy, and it, yeah. it lacks um, um, content that are both entertaining and has substance. Because yeah. you need you need to kind of plant substance into the next generation yeah, yeah. But for them need to, to be able to know how to yeah. you know yeah. cope with life. But at the same time, we can't blame them. The reason being is because a lot of people in this country, you know, live under the poverty yes. uh, line or are of middle class and below. Yeah. And they live very difficult lives. So yes. I understand that when they get home, they just want something Entertaining. that entertains. Yeah. Yeah. Because their lives are already so hard as is. But that's why it's our responsibility to now start packaging shows mm -hmm. in a way that yeah. won't make them feel like they are thinking, yeah. but they yeah. actually are. Yeah. Because yeah. every word that comes out of our mouths mm. will hopefully have be something of value. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so, yeah. yeah. So excited but I've seen, seen a lot of changes, right? You mentioned when you first stepped to Indonesia, then you used to have a panic attack, mm -hmm. and then you. But how, how did you overcome it? So, what changed? You know, how did you overcome the struggles? Right. What finally comes into your internal mm -hmm. mindset? Uh, when I had the mental and emotional and spiritual growth last year during the pandemic, I started to realize that. that there was no point in me harboring hate towards mm. those who hurt so, me. Mm. Because, you know, oftentimes people say, oh, just forgive, just forgive. But what does forgiveness actually mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, True. I guess even though I've always yes. been aware of it, it was never in the forefront of my mind. I'm like, okay, I forgive you. But that doesn't solve anything because <laughs> you still have anger yeah. and anxiety in your heart. Mm -hmm. So then I realized, oh, I know what forgiveness means. And for me, it meant pushing, uh, taking out all the poison in my mm. heart. Mm. Yeah. That's true. And leaving it behind me because forgiveness in actuality is not for those who hurt you. Yeah. Forgiveness for you. is for you. For you. And yeah, I deserve absolutely. to be happy. I don't deserve for their negativity or my memory of their negativity to constantly hold me back. Yeah. Because I deserve a happy life and I will be able to do so much more if I do things with an open heart and a clear mind. And so let those people, mm -hmm. you know, think the way they want. Yeah. But um, I no longer want to be affected by them. I, I do but, agree yeah. with yeah with that because like to me I, I always see forgiveness it, like love is mm -hmm. a choice mm -hmm. you have to make that inner decision because it is really a gateway to inner peace and liberation when we talk about the liberation it's really it, it's really like you, you were just mentioning mm -hmm. you have to actually let go when you actually forgive that person mm -hmm. you're actually you know you, you process things inside of you mm -hmm. and and when you make that choice, it actually empowers you first and foremost because mm. you are actually taking power back. Yeah. And not that letting that circumstances or that situation control you yeah. and control your emotions because like, you know, circumstances happen, good mm -hmm. or bad. Things happen mm. in life, mm -hmm. but things don't have to happen in, to your soul. Yeah. That's how I see it. And, and I think it is um, uh, 
quite a, a important thing to do because when you have um, what, what I want to say a crippled crippled spirit, mm -hmm. it really saps away energy yeah. from mm -hmm. your life. And and that 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 thing, like you said, what you harbored inside, that might actually hinder your potential mm -hmm. and hinder your progress yeah. towards things that you want to love yeah. and people that you want to empower. I mean, yeah, for yeah. the longest time, everything I did was to prove people wrong. Yeah. Like, I wanted to go to this academic mm -hmm. institution to prove to people that I'm smart. Mm. I wanted to win this award yeah. or get this movie to prove to people that I'm talented. And yeah. once I realized that there was no point in doing yeah. so, yeah. that's when I slowly realized oh, this is what gave me anxiety in the past, trying to prove people wrong. That was the first step. Second of all, um, I realized that when I was in Indonesia, I could never be myself in public. I was always grim, I was always quiet, I was always serious, when in reality, I'm actually so goofy. I don't take myself I seriously. What's the yes. reaction to yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I'm very bubbly, and yeah. only my friends in the U.S. see that. Yeah. So they get very confused when I tell them I'm like X, Y, Z in Indonesia. Yeah. And I'm like, why? Why am I doing this to myself? Like, yes. instead of trying to prove to people who I really am, why don't I just be myself? And that's when Wonderful. I realize, you know what? Forget about what people say. They don't yes. know what they're talking about. And once I had that forgiveness in my heart. That's when, for the first time, I acted like myself on a film set that I did, uh, mm. that I was in in November, and I realized when once I was able to be myself, people were so nice to me, and they loved my <laughs> company, and they would call me things like Sunshine. You know? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I never yeah. been called Sunshine in my career ever. <laughs> When I was when I was like it's a wrap, they were like yay sunshiners. So they even like <laughs> built a fan base within our film set yes. just for me. That must wow. be so healing. Yes. yes. No, what I, what I also heard out of what you said is like what also helped you forgive actually uh, is like you got a better understanding of the people who did say those things towards yes. you, right? And that probably is another step I, I personally think that actually helps you forgive people mm -hmm. that you actually learn to understand their point of view where they come from, mm -hmm. why they would say such things. Yeah. Maybe they don't know better. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just the culture and they were brought up that way. And just being able to understand those things, mature, mm -hmm. and actually not mm -hmm. see from the point of view of the victim, yeah. but actually of the, like you take yourself yes. out of the equation and you see from both sides and you and you can take an objective stand and see like, oh, that's, that's why. And I can see how that helped you let go of that poison, yeah. you know, that you had inside yourself. Yeah, and then when I met you in December, I could feel like, you know, like you were so much lighter, like yeah. as if yeah. you're ready now. I could breathe. Like, and, yeah. and the goal that yeah. you had for your life and the purpose and the calling, it's like, now I'm ready. Yeah, you like, can come and, out. And, and, and I'm not yeah. surprised that now this YouTube channel of yours or two YouTube channels, you know, I mean, you, the, yeah. a new the YouTube, book and the YouTube channel, a, yeah. a new Instagram, like the, all these things, you, they, they start to, they start to um, materializing because mm -hmm. you're ready. You let go of all the things yes. that had held you back, that weighed weighed down on your shoulders, and I felt like before you wanted to serve the people that mm -hmm. you feel called to, you wanted to serve women in Indonesia. Yeah. But while you're still holding on to a grudge that includes them, mm, yeah. how can you serve the people that you still hold a grudge exactly. against? Yeah. And, and the moment you let go of that, I felt like, wow, you know, now, now Chinja's ready. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and now seeing what you're doing, I'm just super happy. Seriously, oh, I'm so happy yes. to see it. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. And I'm so excited to see what's going to come out of this. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so sure you're going to have a great impact into mm -hmm. the generation after us. You know, the generation mm -hmm. that's going to be in Indonesia, the generation of women that yes. are going to have children again who are going to teach their children hopefully better than the generation before them because they didn't know better. And yeah. it's, I'm, I'm really glad you do that. Thank you Thank so much you. for doing that. Yeah. Woo. Okay, so I, I like what Chinta was saying about poison, you know, because mm. I remember uh, I always hold into this um, principle in my life that if you don't forgive someone, it's like you're drinking a poison and you're wishing other people to die. You know, mm -hmm. while, while at the end, yeah. you are the one who is dying inside, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you said yourself that it was so liberating when you realized that yeah. the forgiveness uh, gives to you that kind of liberation, that kind of uh, understanding in a way like, oh, now I'm free, you know, I'm, I'm letting go what is holding me back, what is yeah. the grudges that is holding me back, so at the end you can liberate. But it's funny as well for me, I kind of like a forgetful person, so 
I'm not easily I'm not easily uh, holding grudges. Probably I hurt people more than people hurt me. <laughs> But it's true, you know, that um, bu bos galak. Yeah, bu bos galak. <laughs> there are so many people that actually came to me and said, you know, I I felt you know hurt. Da 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 da. I was like, oh, okay, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize mm. that. But what came into my realization uh, last year is the same when, because it's pandemic probably, and we <laughs> did contemplate a lot go during inside. the pandemic. Go inside, yes, meditate, you know, pray. Um, for me, it's more difficult for myself to 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 forgive my own mistake. Mm -hmm. I think that was more difficult. So it took me years to realize that I haven't really actually forgive myself for the mistake that I did. Mm -hmm. So because probably like eight years back, um, I made a mistake that it hurts a lot of people, people mm -hmm. that I love. You know, I made a decision that was wrong, and and I kept kept blaming myself, and it came with shame. It came with oh. guilt. You know, shame and guilt brings you down so much in mm -hmm. a way in life. You know, and and yeah. it. Maybe I was I was successful in my career. Everything was good, but because it, it related to love life for sure. Yeah. But along the years, it made me realize and made me feel like I I don't deserve the best because I made that kind of mistake. Yeah. You know, and I always feel like if something good happened to me, I said it's not for me. I don't deserve that. You know, so I, you I doubt that. I doubt that that it was, it was too true. To it's too good to be true okay. and. And the shame, the guilt, you know, is, is always there. It's like, oh, I made this mistake last time. Then how could I did that? You know, why? And it keep coming back years after years, years after years. Only until last year that, um, you know, it was it was when I was praying and and I realized that some something is is inside me is telling me that you need to forgive yourself. If you never mm -hmm. forgive yourself, you can never move on in your life. Mm -hmm. And it was so hard. Forgiving, forgiving yourself is much harder than forgiving other people because you know you shouldn't do that, but you did. Yeah. And when you did that, you felt like, why? I failed myself, I failed my family, I failed the people that I love, mm. I failed God, you know, that kind of feeling. Mm. But last year when I, I decided that, okay, I'm going to forgive myself, I'm just going to let it go. Gosh. Letting go is, is a process, right? Let go is a process. Yeah. Only then when I started to forgive myself, doesn't mean that I forget. You know, it's still there. Mm -hmm. I, and you I, still live with the consequences. I still live with the consequences. Right? Yeah. You know, I, I can never turn back time. It happened. The consequences were there. I, I, I bear the consequences for eight years. Consequences yeah. was there. Uh, but I'm able to move on and say, okay, I, I did that. And I admit that I did that. It was a mistake. Yes, I tried to apologize to people that I hurt, even if they didn't accept it. What can I do? You know, mm -hmm. But I did try to apologize. And I have to move on. Um, it's so liberating in the end. Yeah. And, um, so it's yeah, like but taking, it's giving pain, meaning to your pain. And it's giving meaning to my pain. It, it teach me to, Regina, that there are things that you can't control. Whatever in the past is in the past. Yeah. I, I can't turn back time. I, I can't do anything. I wish people that I hurt would understand. But even if they couldn't, you know, I can't blame them. But it's. The hardest to actually, I mean, we are the hardest on ourselves usually, right? And, yeah. I, and I feel personally for me, it's also much harder to forgive myself for mistakes than I would, you know, that I would forgive others because I'm such a, such a perfectionist. Um, I remember um, years ago, I think it's like 12 years ago, I was doing an internship here in Jakarta. It was my first time working here. And I made a research mistake that we based part of a survey on that went Indonesia wide. And I made a research mistake, and in the end, like a quarter of the whole survey was like useless. It cost the company so much money. I was so, I, I felt such a, I felt like such a failure. And I remember I was like blaming myself. I felt, I, I, and, I, and I couldn't guilt, forget. Right? It, was it was like, like the guilt. Guilt, shame, shame. Uh, failed my own standards mm -hmm. because I, I always pride, I, I was really proud in, I always give excellent work. Whatever I would do, I would do an excellent job. And there I failed completely. And it took me forever to forgive myself. And it, I, I realized it paralyzed me for a very long time that I felt I was not good enough to work in a certain field. Or I was just, you know, when you just, you feel like I've made such a big mistake. Yeah, I, 
I don't deserve working on that level again or being trusted with so much. Maybe I should just do something else because obviously I can't even do a good job, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think if it was someone else, I think I would have said, yeah, this person deserves another chance. But on myself, I was so much harsher. Right. And it, it took me a very long time to forgive that and to actually move on from that and say like, oh no, actually, you know, after you make mistakes, you get up and you learn from it. Sometimes, unfortunately, other people have to pay for it and it's the consequences, right? And we live with that for a while. But yeah, it's, it's important to forgive myself in order to be able to move on in life and be able to work even, you know, and, and make a living yeah. and yeah. I, I think I like it that, you know, what we're touching on here because it actually goes both ways, right? What, how I'm seeing it. It's like you have to first forgive your, you know, in the circumstances because when a mistake happens, it's always us versus the surroundings or another person, whatever yeah. the circumstances is. And um, how, I think how we forgive ourselves is important, but it's also important how we also forgive others. The example that you given in, in the company, like if, if I was the boss, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like I had to forgive you for the mistake, you know, this intern had made and cost us time and all, all sorts of things and given me a lot of problems. I, if I don't let that go, I could easily use you as a crutch, you know, for my lack of performance in, 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 in the company. Mm -hmm. And I can play like victim mindset. And this is on a corporate setting, but actually on, on, a, on, on like a day-to-day -day personal setting too. I feel like when we don't forgive somebody, we, we tend to use that mistake that we hold on to and not let go. And we kind of, you know, in the back of our head, yeah. unconsciously yeah. we will say, that gives us an excuse mm -hmm. to not forgive that person because you did this to yeah. me, mm -hmm. because you didn't listen to instruction properly, so you did all that research yeah. wrong on that job. So when, let's say, when someone questions, hey, you're the CEO of the company, mm -hmm. why did your research fail? I, oh, by the way, I've got this lady mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, on my team that didn't listen. And, and I think that they should be the one doing the double checking. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. <laughs> And I think like that, that letting go is so important. Um, but at the same time, I guess we need to define or, or actually talk about what actually forgiveness is mm -hmm. and what it isn't. Mm -hmm. Because I think that approach, you know, forgiving correctly is a wisdom in and of itself, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Well, these, these, you know, all these personal experiences are so cool. And I've, I've been on the verge of tears like these past, what, 10 <laughs> minutes when we're talking. <laughs> For me, I can relate to both of you. Personally, I'm actually quite a tough person to deal with. I, I have a little bit of a temper, and if I were a boss, I could definitely be a uh, Galak boss. <laughs> oh, that's probably. <laughs> the, 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 the RBF, the Las Vegas Pigs. Yeah. yeah. Not me. <laughs> no, not you. She's, not you. she's the Peace. sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. Peace, everyone. <laughs> but um, the reason why I'm saying this is because. I remember thinking for many years, and I still believe this to, to this day, yeah. God purposely made me go through all these obstacles so that I would become a more empathetic mm. and compassionate person. So I would know what it feels yeah. like to be on the other side. Because up until the age of 12, you know, I was very social, I was an athlete, mm. so I never really had interpersonal problems. Yeah. Like okay. I always thought, oh, like the social hier hierarchy is easy to maintain, like, you know, everything's mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. until I entered the entertainment industry and then things got really, really rough, you know? I mean, imagine, ima you know, the reason why I think I had a victim mentality for so long is because I experienced what I experienced at such a young age. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, I'm going to use your daughter as an example. In four mm -hmm. years time, she is going to be where I was 14 years ago, oh. and imagine as a 12, 13 year old, yeah. someone who hasn't really found her own identity, having people literally shout at you as you walk down, as you walk in the mall and say, you know, uh, imitate the way you speak. Mm. Oh. But you know, even though wow. that might be a form of admiration, because you know, sometimes people don't really understand what's appropriate and not appropriate. Yes. For me, it was like, why are they mocking me? Why are they harassing yeah. me? It was really scary. Yeah, it was yeah, not yeah. fun. And 
what was even harder was you know my parents didn't really understand what was going what, what I was going through they didn't see it as a form of bullying my mom would be like Nggak papa lagi. they love you imut lucu I'm like you know if there was one thing mm-hmm. I wish I could change is I wish she would have been cradled me a little more because mm-hmm. I had to deal with all that myself yeah and you know after bad things just ha- started happening one after the other and even like things that had happened in my life in the last eight years when I was in the US I finally there was a point in my life where I thought okay maybe God put me in this world on purpose so I could just harbor all the pain in my heart maybe this is the kind of life that I deserve like one wow. where I'm constantly in a state of anger, sadness, depression, anxiety, and that's why I made that promise to myself when I moved, you know, a few weeks before coming to Indonesia on the 1st of July of 2019. I was like, I don't care if I don't have friends, I don't need love in my life, I don't need anything, but just let my hard work pay off. Mm. And then it was last year during the pandemic when I finally started meeting more and more lovely people, you know, in addition to Viola, there are a few other amazing women I started meeting in my life. I think you know who I'm referring to. That's when I realized, (laughs) why am I I not allowed to be, why why am I not allowed to have friends? Like having friends who actually understand me is amazing. And once I started to adopt a positive Mm. mindset Mm. and, you know, uh, embrace the good things that were happening to me, that's when I realized, hey, I can be successful, I can be productive while still having friends, while still feeling love, while having meaningful conversations and relationships. And I think it's when I started letting, again, letting go of the poison in my heart, Mm. that's when I was able to forgive what happened to me in the past, and that's when I was finally able to slowly reach my Mm. maximum potential and become the best version of myself. Yeah. Wow. What I'm hearing is like you, you allow, like you know, as you forgive, the door to your heart to other people open. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. and that that you know that that like the initial inability to experience you know joy mm-hmm. and you know to live joyfully because I you think it. yeah you I blocked, blocked it. it yeah, yeah it's, it's, I was playing yeah. the victim. I was like you know what let it be like maybe this is the course of my life. Correct. I'm meant to just constantly be experiencing these negative emotions and God let me because he knows I'm strong enough. Yeah. That's yeah. what I thought. I'm strong mm. enough to feel all this. Wow. And 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 that's like that's actually such a uh, um it's just like a little lie that you told yourself yeah, and it was, you had to live like this. And it was unhealthy wow. and it inhibited me from showing my true self yeah. why because Ever since I was a little girl, since I had to like deal everything, deal mm-hmm. with everything on my own, I always told myself I'm not gonna let the bullies win. And by saying that to so myself, I, like I always put up a very strong front mm-hmm. to make them believe that I was confident, yes. in power, in control, and everything was perfect in my life. But yeah. that's when I realized people couldn't, my fans couldn't relate to me because I always tried to appear perfect. Mm-hmm. And it was only this year and through my platform like yes. Surat Dari Cinta, Puella, yeah. that I'm starting to get messages from new fans, from mm. old fans, saying, "I can relate to you. I, you know, I'm so glad you talked about this because this is what I'm feeling." And it's only when I started forgiving that I was able to be more vulnerable, and I realized that not being perfect was actually better and yeah. allowed me to help people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was when I finally let go of the perfect, trying to be perfect, that I was able to. Uh, accomplish my mission in yeah. helping people or gradually helping people. I love that because I, I, I'm always a mm. firm believer that actually the capacity to have vulnerability is true strength. Yeah. You know, yeah. But I think besides like us forgiving and being able to step into our calling, I think sometimes what holds us back, for example, from uh, for unforgiveness yeah. can actually hold us back to actually have really good relationships with other people, mm. right? And um, as you even said, you were not even able to have like friendships because mm. you're still holding mm-hmm. on to that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I, I remember like um, there was an incident with my brother a few years ago where he really deeply disappointed me and he disappointed the whole family. And I used to be really close with my brother, like mm. him and me, I, I was the closest person to him, I think. And I, I always felt like I, we understood each other and all that. But when that thing happened, um, I remember so angry at him. I blamed him. I, I took it personal. I'm like, how could you do this to my life? You know, how could mm-hmm. you be such a, 
how could you ruin this part of my life, of my mm -hmm. family life? And I, and I was really bitter against him and I was mean against him. And then, and then for quite a while, I think a few years, I just felt like, well, the, the relationship between me and my, me and my brother is just not, it's just not there anymore. Like the connection's lost, you mm -hmm. know? And it took me a process of maturity and growing up <laughs> as well. Um, and, and one day it dawned on me that I, I didn't have to forgive my brother. I had to actually ask for forgiveness because I realized when he was at his lowest point and he had messed up everything in his life, not purposely because who does that? Who messes yeah. up his whole family, right, purposely? I was there instead of giving him a hand, hey, hey, I'm here with you. I actually kicked him. I put him down. I was like, like not literally, but I actually literally hit him. And I was, I was so angry at him. And, and I remember he ran out of the house and didn't come to my wedding, which was closely after, right? Um, oh. and, and in that moment, it dawned on me. I had, I had let him down. Mm -hmm. And I was still in Jakarta. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to go back to Germany in one month, right? And I'm like, OK, in one month. I have to ask forgiveness, right? I'm like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And then I remember I was in Germany and I'm like, every day I was like, God, please give me the right moment to mm. talk mm. to my brother and ask him for forgiveness, Aww. right? And then there really came the moment where I was in the kitchen and my brother came in and it was like, it was like a switch in me knowing now is the moment. And I'm like, I'm like, Marco, that's my brother's name. I'm like, Marco, I have to talk to you. Right? And I'm like, I actually, I've, I want to ask you to forgive me. And I said, like, I told him, I'm like, I'm so sorry what I did. I'm sorry I was not there for you and all these things. And in that moment, it was like, he said, he said, I, I'm OK. I forgive you. I'm also sorry. And then he hugged me, and we hugged. And in that moment, it was like, poof. It was, it was like the relationship was there again, nice even story. though yeah. all the things had happened, but it was like, there was a connection again, we can build on that again. Yes. And it took me to realize I have to ask forgiveness, right? Um, yeah. But I felt like every time there's forgiveness happening, a real forgiveness, yeah. not one that we just like, yeah, I forgive him, you know, yes. or like, yes. or, mm. but, but the real thing is happening where you unload that whole bitterness or where, mm -hmm. where you don't, where everything is coming out and it's real. And it can, it can reconnect people, it can, liberate yeah. you to have relationship again it mm -hmm. can liberate you for uh, liberate you for your calling in your life it can liberate you to actually serve the people you want to serve it can liberate you to actually be there for your family love them love your husband you know yeah. um serve the family and not just be there and live every day one after another with like dysfunctioning yeah. <laughs> relationships and all these kind of things right and it has so much power to forgive. I really believe that. And, and I see that, like, through your story, I see, yeah. like, how much power it has. Yes. And, and, but I, it really takes some realization sometimes. Like, you need to come behind the, why can I not forgive? Yeah. Or is it my turn to forgive, right? Or is it my turn to ask for forgiveness? Like, and if we haven't understood the whole thing correctly or if we're not mature enough, can we actually reach that point, right? Mm -hmm. I've met a friend of mine who came to me literally and she said, so what, if I forgive him means I have to be friends with him? No. I said, no. no. I said, who, who, who told you that if yeah. you are forgiving someone, meaning you forget what he has done or what she has done? Yeah. Forgiveness and forget, forgetting is, is not correlating in a way. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't come together. Yeah, it's, it's actually it's two separate wrong. issues. Yeah. Forgiving for me, especially if it's a wrongdoing that you can't ever forget, is more, again, back to it's, it's for it's yourself. You. Yeah, it's for you. Forgiving yourself, forgiving what's happened, and allowing yourself to move out of that circumstance yeah. in order to move forward and live a happy life, you know? Um, you're right, like you don't have to interact with that individual ever again, but but don't let their mistake hold you hostage. Yeah, yeah. that's how I feel. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think a lot of people think that when you forgive someone, that means you're okay with what they did. Exactly, that's and a misconception. That's not true. That's, that's not true. true. When yeah. you forgive someone, you can be totally not okay with what they did yeah. to you or to others, mm. but you decide to move on, to, to say, 
I am, I'm not holding on to this person's neck anymore, yeah. right? I'm not holding on to them. Yes. I'm going to let go so I can actually go around and, and leave. Because yes. as long as I'm mm -hmm. holding that bitterness towards that person, I'll be stuck there. Mm -hmm. Like every day I'll come back to the same yeah. place. I cannot actually move on and grow because I'll be stuck down there. It's like I'm chaining myself to that person yeah. without that person even noticing probably. Yeah. Yeah. But the moment I let go and I'm like, no, I'm going to forgive that person. I might even understand what happened in their life that brought them to this point that they were able to do such a horrible thing mm. and actually see like, oh yeah, I, maybe if this would have happened in my life, I might be in the same place. That doesn't mean it's okay. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that everything I did in my life is okay, mm. but I'm going to remove myself from this and I'm going to move on, right? But it's still not okay what they did. Yeah. I think like it's very important to distinguish, right? The mistake or the hurt that we, whether it's done by us or others to us, um, that we acknowledge is wrong. Mm. That causes pain. Yeah. That 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 affects other people, mm -hmm. and that's acknowledging that thing. We can compartmentalize what was wrong with that. Yeah. But you know, I really love how Chinda put it that way just now. Like forgiveness is really from inside, so that you can come out and live joyfully for, for and you. live out. And it's really mm. that that what, what I shared earlier was. It's really. When we do that, we actually take power back into our exactly. life. We yeah. take control. Yeah, because if not, you give that person yeah, you, the power. You give so much power yeah, so away much power to that, that person to so hold you back. Yeah. I've been saying this a lot in many of my interviews. At the end of the day, life is all about choices. Yeah. And it's your responsibility yes. to make the right choice for yourself. Mm. You know, and oftentimes as human beings, I realize that it's easier to dwell on mm -hmm. the sorrows. It's mm. easier to yes. stay bitter. Mm -hmm. yes. But you need to remind yourself, how badly yeah. do you want to be happy? Mm. How badly oh, do I you want to witness yeah. progress in your life? Mm. How badly do you want to feel at peace yeah. with yeah. yourself? Yeah. And I'm a big believer that if you want something badly enough and actually mean mm. it and it comes from the heart, that's when you're able to forgive. Yeah. And that's when you're able to, as Viola said, not necessarily forget what they did or say it's okay, but yeah. just like dropping a mic, just dropping them, yeah. leaving in the past and move okay. forward. Yeah. 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 Because if you don't draw the line, sometimes a mm -hmm. lot of people, they do not know how to draw the line and mm -hmm. being naively being told that you have to forgive and forget, yeah. it will keep coming back to you. Yeah, but, but it's like a recurring it's behavior, it's like a re right? because, because we've taught that way. Like, you know, when you're a child and, and someone and, and something happens, like you play with your sibling and your sibling does something to you and then you fight. And then at the end, um, mm -hmm. the parents ask the other sibling, apologize to sibling A, right? Yes. And then you get the, the apology yes. and then they want you to say, it's okay, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so we're, we're taught to say, it's okay, when actually what we should do is like, Someone apologizes, yeah. apologizes to you and you say, That's not okay. thank you for apologizing. Thank mm. you. I I'll like receive that. the apology. I it like doesn't mean approach. you have to say, yes. it's okay. Yeah. Like, because yeah. it, it's two different things. But since we're brought up, we're supposed to say it's okay, right? Or that's what we think we have to do. And that already sets our mind up to think that when we say, you know, like that when apology is coming, we're supposed to like just let it all go. As yeah. if it didn't Because it's, it's dangerous, it's you know. It happens to me. I. So I had to forgive this person because I think he hurt me so much in a way. But I didn't keep the clean lines mm -hmm. or the clear line or the boundaries. So because we work in the same place. Yes. So you know you have to interact. But then I keep letting that person in into my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the hurt will always be there. You oh, know? It, it okay. keeps recurring back. It okay. keeps coming back. It keeps coming back. Only until... It doesn't mean I didn't forgive him. I forgave him. But because I didn't have, it still poisons, it's, it still poisons it's still toxic, me because, yeah. because you see that person every day, you met that person, you let that person still be friends with you, mm. hanging out with you, and it's hard, yeah. okay, and, and until up to the point when I say, okay, it's not good for me, I have to make the, the boundaries, yeah. yes. I don't need to be friends with you anymore, I mean, you know, Correct. just acquaintance, yeah, just <laughs> if, yeah. Yeah, if I say hi, yes, necessarily, yeah. but it doesn't mean I'm going to be friends with you, going to call you, talk to you every day. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, I really love this quote by Paul Scanlon. Um, he says, you don't have to build a relationship with everyone you forgive. Mm. That's Just true. because you're at peace doesn't mean they're not still toxic. 
Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> they, can still, they, they can still be toxic, right? But yeah. You can you can forgive a person for what they did once. It doesn't mean you allow them back into their life to do it over exactly. and over and yeah. over again. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you do that? That would yeah. be stupid, right? Yeah. So um, I wonder, like, what do you think are like really good boundaries that are still loving, you know, loving towards yourself and loving towards others? How do you set boundaries with people that hurt you? For me, I, I think one of my key apology language is to actually have wrong, like your change behavior, to actually observe a change behavior in the person. Because there's very often, just like we say, I forgive you, people say, oh, I'm sorry, or, you know, very you casually. Yeah, mm. and there's actually no real change in their behavior. Yeah. Mm. So for me, like, forgiveness is from my choice to forgive you for what you have done, right? So like, you know, I've experienced several times people would slander me and say, you know, put words in my mouth and say like, I did this to them, or I did that and I hurt them. And it's totally preposterous. Like, that's not the truth. That's their own, like, you know, ignorant, yeah, yeah. yeah their own reality, <laughs> right? And so... I had to, of course, the first time when I experienced it, it was very hard to forgive because it was that, what's up with that? <laughs> you know, like, where, where did that come from? Why, why did you decide out of nowhere to, to put that verdict upon me that especially I've never, I didn't actually do that to you. But when I actually forgave them, I would take a step back and I would have to cultivate my wisdom in that observation of, is this a right thing to once again allow this person to come back into my life? Mm -hmm. If I don't observe that change behavior, it's like you said, it, you know, every time you open that door and let them in and you don't set up that healthy boundaries, that drama <laughs> is gonna recur again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And because they haven't matured, they haven't, they perhaps need to first forgive themselves or actually have some introspection and be like, oh, actually, you know, I need to fix this about myself or I need to improve and, and, and then realign my values or my behavior so that I don't hurt other people anymore. And up until I see that, I, I clearly am like, okay, arm's length. I would still respect you, be polite with you. It's, I'm not like childish if I see you in the mall and, and mm -hmm. I run the other way. No, I, I see you, I say hi, but are you gonna be like my inner circle? No, I'm sorry. But also realize that even though you've forgiven, it's also not your responsibility to help them realize that they're yeah. wrong. Yeah, they that's need to go point. through their yeah. own Process, growth. Yeah. And for me personally, you know, there are a few people who I believe have wronged me throughout their life. Yeah. That's where my life and I've forgiven them, but for some of them who haven't realized that they've yeah. done me wrong, I just, you know, I wish them the best, but yes. I'm, I'm no longer yes. their friend. And, and if I see them, of course, I'll be polite. But at the same time, it's not my responsibility yeah. to make them realize. If yeah. they don't feel like they've done anything wrong, let it be, but don't let them continue yeah. to affect you. Don't let their perception yeah. affect how you feel about yourself or how you view yeah. yourself, because they no longer matter. Right. If, they're not helping, if they're not helping you build yourself up, don't let their opinions or yeah. their existence yeah. affect you. Yeah, it's like the word we use, right? Like, is it toxic? Yeah, you said like toxic fumes, right? Yeah, you, you stay away. You stay away. <laughs> <laughs> so you unfriend <laughs> them on unfriend <laughs> friend them on Facebook. It, or well, you. now on Instagram if they have that, that setting necessary. that you can mute them. Yeah, yeah. Just mute them. You don't have to unfollow yeah. them. Just yeah. mute them. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. There is those three dots up in the right corner. Honestly, yeah. once you see yeah. less of them and yeah. hear less of them, they start, you start feeling like they don't exist. And that's, the, I mean, this is mean, but that's the approach I take. Like, I just pretend like they don't exist. And if, if let's say they're still on my social media, as I say, yeah. I mute them. And the less I see of them on my feed in my life, yeah. I forget they ever and exist. You <laughs> and you don't need to feel um, judged. You know, a lot yeah. of people judge you anyway. But you said you forgive me, but why you don't want to talk to me? I say, I don't want to talk to you. No. I yeah, because they don't it's understand. Yeah. yeah, they don't understand. What forgiveness so you is. don't you don't need to feel judged mm -hmm. in a way if you just cut some people out of your life just because they are toxic, right? It, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's your right to live your life the way you want and associate yes. yourself with the people mm -hmm. you want to associate yes. with, with. So you know, if someone says, "Oh, I thought you forgiven me," is you know, all you for me personally, I could say, "Yes, I've forgiven really? you," but also respect my choice and I believe that it is better for us not, not to, to be, be in each other's perfect. lives yeah. but yeah. I'll always be cordial I'll always be nice to you when I see you but just don't expect to that be. you can take any more of my time or my energy mm -hmm. until you have gained my trust back I yeah. would say yeah. if someone works hard to gain trust back I think at some point and you can see the change in behavior you yes. can see there is a you know there is work that they've mm -hmm. done on themselves then I think it actually is possible, right, to have a reconciliation. It depends on the situation, but yeah. 
especially when you're like in a family setting, it, this is easier said than done, right? Mm -hmm. Because oh yeah, absolutely. Um, what if your parents say you should talk to your sister, and I, you're like, um, but my sister has physically violated me, right? Mm -hmm. Like for example, yeah. How are you supposed to, you know, like? But and they're like, oh, you should, you know, your sisters, don't be like that. I mean, I think a lot of people have things like that happening in their house yeah, where they're yes. like being forced to get along with someone that has actually violated them in a certain way, maybe verbally or Correct. maybe physically. Mm. And how are they supposed to draw the line? Yeah, like right? you like how mentioned, like how you prioritize, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. relationship, do right? Do you prioritize because your family unity or do you prioritize yourself yeah, and disassociate from them? Because yeah. not or can every, there be yeah. real fam can there be real family unity yeah. if you yeah. actually have a problem like that and it's just fake family unity, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's How like to... not spoken, yeah. right? But there are some relationship probably worth to reconcile with. Mm -hmm. Maybe like I mentioned, family, I do not know. But depending even, on, it, what, depending happened, on yeah. what happened, yeah. So how, how do you prioritize that? For me, yeah. for myself, if it's because I'm close with my family, so of course I had a lot of family reconciliation before. Mm. Either my brother wronged me, I wronged my brother, or mm. my sister, you know. Mm. Uh, I think every family yeah, has every those family things, has right? those things, yes. and yeah. because they are important for me, that's why I, I put my efforts in terms of reconciliation mm -hmm. with them to reconcile with them because yeah. I, I know it's important and yeah. I. Again, but I need to see they change mm -hmm. behavior. Obviously, as children, I'm sure, well, maybe I'm not sure, but like <laughs> I personally have had problems with my parents, for mm. example. Don't get me wrong, I love yeah. them so yeah. much. Yeah. We're close. I see them two to three times a year because they live in Bali. Yeah. But of course, there are things in life that we don't always agree upon. Yeah. And there have been yes. things in our history that I've tried to forgive and maybe I'm still mm -hmm. working on. Mm -hmm. But you know, of course, there are, it's not always perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess I'm just trying to share how I deal with, yeah. you know, the frustration or anger I've felt towards my own parents. Because you can't disown your parents. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially in I Indonesia. I had to go through that process exactly. too. Exactly. Yeah. In Indonesia or in Asian cultures, you know, parents are everything. Thing, you yeah. have to give them your love and respect. Yeah. But with me, what I've started to do is, you know, first of all, I try to have a very open conversation with my parents. I'm like, hey, understand that you know, we don't have the same point of view. You need to understand that I have my own life. I love you and respect you. But something that I've told my parents is don't expect me mm. to be your source of happiness. Mm. If I am, oh. that's great. But you also need to find your own happiness because mm -hmm. as human beings, we are yeah. all responsible for our own happiness. Yes. Yes. It does not mean that if something bad that's happens to them, I wouldn't be there for them. I'd fly, take mm -hmm. the first flight out. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what I mean by like finding their, my own happiness and their own happiness yeah. is make sure that even uh, void of my presence or like void of my communication, yeah. they can still enjoy life on yeah. their own. Yeah. yeah. Because we all have our own life's course. And not only that, sometimes, you know, mothers can be annoying and constantly mm -hmm. text you and like nag you for no reason. And I've just learned to block that out. I tell my mom, mom, if I don't respond to you, it's not yeah. because I don't care, it's not because I don't respect you, but just understand that rather than lashing out at you or screaming at you or like having beef, yes. mm -hmm. I'd rather ignore you yes. so that when we meet or when we talk, you know, there isn't tension, tension or yes. anger. That's a boundary yeah. basically. It's yeah, a, it's I a create healthy a boundary, boundary yes. that helps you to have a good relationship with yes. your mother, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think like this is um, a good lead into something that, you know, I'm thinking in my head where we're, we talked about forgiveness and we talked about boundaries. And I think it's also good to talk about the healthy, a healthy way to approach the journey of forgiveness. Because for mm. me, like your example, I think it was so important that you spoke up, mm. you know, and communicate. You know, it, even if it was the little things like, mom, stop nagging me, you know, like mm -hmm. it doesn't mean I don't care about you and all that, but you know, I've, I've got things on my end. And, yeah. and, yeah. You know, <laughs> and there are times like when, when sometimes we think like that person hurt me, maybe that in that person's mind, that yeah, wasn't happening. That. Maybe, yeah. you know, like your, your case, you're really, really busy and it's not like, you know, I don't love you anymore. I, I'm just unable to attend to you right now. And mm -hmm. when we don't communicate those issues, or, or, or voice them out, um, we assume 
Like, you you're supposed to read my mind to know exactly why I am angry at you. And I think with a lot of relationships that are not healthy, mm -hmm. a lot of the root stems of that because there is no courage to actually open up and say, look, I think we need to address this issue. I know it's difficult mm -hmm. and it's, it actually bothers me. Maybe you don't even realize what you do, even if it's a small thing, it actually really irks me and it drives me mad. And I notice that I'm now consciously or unconsciously, I'm taking scores yeah. of how you're mm. treating me. But then maybe that person doesn't even realize like, yeah. oh, wow, actually this behavior of mine really gets on, on that person's nerve. I, yeah, and right? sometimes even after you communicate openly, they still <laughs> don't yes, think they're in the wrong. But yeah, at that yeah. point, you just have to understand that they'll never change. It's not on you to make them change, yes. but the way you react yes, to their the behavior react. needs to good. change. Yeah, yeah but I, what, what, you, what you said is like, it really rings a bell in me because last year, there's something I realized that um, when you forgive a person for those little itsy bitsy mm -hmm. things, um, it might mean you have forgiven, but you still haven't addressed the problem. And mm -hmm. so it's still there in the relationship. And, and, and I had done that with my husband unintentionally for probably two years. I, I, I remember last year I was at a point where it suddenly dawned on me what had happened because I felt distant from him. Mm -hmm. I felt I had negative thoughts towards him. Mm. And, um, and, I, and I had come to that point where it had just created a problem because then it was two weeks into cor into the lockdown <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. and the first week was beautiful like holidays <laughs> and the second week was like oh my god how can I get out of his way you know like <laughs> I need my space like you yeah. have to suddenly deal with stuff that you could avoid before because when you're not around each other the whole time you don't actually notice things but now we yeah. have to face it right like we yeah. went inside yeah. and I'm like yeah. there's something wrong mm. right and it dawned on me that I had not told him a lot of things that I had thought about him, okay. that I had thought about him negatively. I had made assumptions and I had made, uh, I had thought things about him where he did something to me, maybe something small. And, and I was like, oh, well, it's just a small thing. I let it go. Yeah. But what I didn't realize is that it was as if I forgive what I thought, right? I forgive, but it still goes on a list. Mm. It still goes somewhere, or let, imagine it as a brick. I, it go, it's like a little brick, and an invisible brick, mm. and, and I take this assumption about him and this little, this little offense, and I put it down on the f between us, and then every time something little happens, I'm like, it's too little to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. It will just create a drama. Let's just drop it. I can, I can let go. I can forgive this. Yeah. I add another brick, and I add another brick, and I had done it for two years. Imagine two years. You got a wall. And I got, got a, a wall, wall, and it was invisible but it was separating us and I had never addressed it so it was like a, a invisible wall it was feelable I I knew it was there he knew it was there he had no idea why it was there obviously I was the only one who could actually do something about it mm -hmm. because because I had I knew I had something mm. against him yes I had th thoughts against him and it had added up to something that was like separating me from him and and I came to the point where I realized that it took me really forever. I mean, it took me so long. And at that moment, I realized that I was like, oh, no, now I have to tell him all these things. It was like it was slowly festering inside of you because yeah. you didn't attend to and it. it was like, and it built up. Yeah, and it built up and it became worse. And it, like all these assumptions together are like a bad picture, right? And, yeah. and it was real for me. But what I had done when I realized that is I had never given him the chance to explain himself. Mm. to make up for it, to apologize, to ask forgiveness, right? Yeah. I had never given him the chance and he might have done it. He might, he might not have seen the point, but he might at least have done something about it, mm. right? Yeah. Or he could at least have, have explained his point of view. Yeah. And I had never given him the chance because I'd never wanted to address the little things. Mm -hmm. yes. And so the moment I had to address the whole thing, it was really painful because I knew I was going to hurt him with my words. Yeah seeing all these things about him that I had felt about him. But the moment I finally did, and I let it out, and he took it in, and he was like, wow. He, he was like, you thought that about me? And I'm like, yeah. And then he started 
making a case for him. Like he, he, he basically said like, but this and this and this, and this is how I feel, and this is what I did, and mm. this, this is not, this is not real. Like this is not the truth, right? And yeah. he made a case, and he apologized, and he made it up to me, and it was like, poof, it was gone. Yeah. The invisible wall was, was really just in my in yes. my head, and yes. I had, I hadn't given him the chance to tear it down. And mm. until that moment, and the moment I did, that was like. Even though I had forgiven him for these things, I still had kept a score in a way yes. mm. that he could do nothing about. And, and it did create this division. And what could have happened if I would have never addressed it is that it would have gotten to a point where I would think he's so far away, the wall is so thick, yeah, he's so bad, all these mm. things, look how bad he is. It's not worth it anymore, I'll just walk away. Yeah. And then I would have never to address it I would have yeah. never have to hurt him with my words. I would just let all go and leave. And I think that's what happens with a lot of relationships. We just drop yeah. them because we don't want to deal with it. We don't yeah. want to address things. We don't want to tell people the hard things, yes. right? But I think it's part of the process. It's not just to forgive, but you still have to address the issues. And I yeah. think like this kinds of confrontation because they stem from a place of love. Unless you don't want the relationship, you don't work on it and you don't talk about it. And I think it, it, it is also important for both sides to learn that it is a very practical thing to talk about it because if you don't also give someone that opportunity to talk about what's festering inside mm -hmm. of them that perhaps you had no idea was hurting that person that's when it like the whole that's how things always implode right yes but let's play the devil's advocate here oh. you're lucky that mm -hmm. you have a husband who's yeah. emotionally intelligent <laughs> yes. yeah but let's assume kind of yeah <laughs> let's assume, <laughs> no, he but is. let's assume you had given him all this list that you've you know the, the list you've created yeah. and he still didn't get it like how do yeah. you forgive like you or move forward then giving the other person a to chance extent. And what I if never that person gave him doesn't the take the chance? Well, then it's another thing. Yeah. Like if the other person doesn't take the chance, then the case is different. But if the other, but if you never give the chance, you just always assume the worst about the other person. Yeah. You do, and it might not be like that, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's where I, I think like what we were ad addressing earlier about mm -hmm. boundaries is that um, once you have that confrontation and and that discussion how that person reacts to it is mm -hmm. also part and parcel of your decision making of how you're going to react to the circumstances, right? I'm going to forgive and I'm going to let that person in again. And sometimes, sometimes, as you were saying, you, you, you know, with the parents, there was a, a, a little point in my life where I had to protect my own sanity mm -hmm. with my parents, especially with my mother because it was it was very much like you know the whole classic asian mm -hmm. asian parent thing you know you and i i i am all for a children you know loving and being filial back to your parents mm -hmm. but it was getting to a point where it was it no longer made any sense yeah. and it was yeah. overriding mm -hmm. even borderline like that's that's not even part of our family values. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like you're being double standard right now, and you're you're push you're forcing that down my throat, and wanting me to accept that decision about a bad circumstances in the mm -hmm. family. And yeah. and and technically, I am the victim. I don't want to live victimized. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. I, I I I when I was mad, like you know, in, so infuriated by what mm -hmm. was happening in the family, there was a period of time I actually took the poison. I was just, I was just so like, okay, there's no point addressing, you know, like you said, issue, you know, yeah. um, EQ, you know, there's a lot of IQ in my family, but EQ <laughs> sometimes is not really the strongest <laughs> thing. So, and then I acknowledge that and I'm like, pointless addressing these things because they're going to come back and be like, this is the family rule. This is the family law. And there's no yeah. vulnerability mm. of conversation mm. happening. Yeah. And, and, and I noticed I built a wall up because of that. Oh, after I say, you know, I already told you, I think this, 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 this is not right, right? And we need to address it. And, you know, the approach was, no, I'm brushing all your, mm -hmm. your opinions mm -hmm. off. Unity or whatever it is so that you're supposed. do you think supposed. you should have spoken up at the time? Do I, you still I think you need to speak up? I still think, um, I, there are still words that mm. are left unsaid. And mm -hmm. obviously I processed. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the first thing I had to do was internally forgive everyone including the one causing the great pain in the family mm. yeah and in my heart was i forgive the person who did cause the pain but 
I won't have an opportunity to tell that person, but in, internally that set me free yeah. because I stopped penalizing him for a mistake that maybe you've made. It's been years, yeah. you know, and, and I came to terms with myself that this will be an apology I may never get yes. in my entire life because yes. this person, but yeah. how does, how would this person actually know that one day if he or she's in, in trouble, they can come to me and I will be there. But being there and allowing you to come in does not mean up until today I'm okay with the thing you never had the courage or strength to apologize for. Mm. And I think like sometimes it, it's that scale of that wisdom and maturity and mm. deciding if you're going to be that bigger person to effect that big yeah. change. Because sometimes you said you were experiencing shame, right? Mm. When you were going, you because you were the one that caused the yeah, mistake. Yeah, I caused the mistake. Mm -hmm. And sometimes some people need help to, you know, understand yeah. that yeah they need help to forgive themselves yeah. if yeah. it's not a responsibility but if you decided that this is something big enough to confront then maybe we do need to do that i don't know if that's helpful in answering your question like you know if that person doesn't have eq and after sharing all of this like you know this is how you made me feel and they don't exactly react the way that you wish um they would react i think they're there it is necessary to slowly unpack you know, how I should deal with this, but absolutely don't let it fester inside of you because that would kill you. It comes back to the, the first point when we mentioned that forgiveness is all about re liberating yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, at a point of life, like JJ mentioned, there will be a lot of people not getting apology they deserve to get. Yeah. yeah. You know, some people will never apologize to you because they never realize it. Even if you brought it up, they may still feel, I didn't do anything to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, at that point, I think don't hold grudge back to you yeah. again because I, I remember there's a quote mentioned, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people yeah. Yeah. because you will unleash the hurt to other people around mm -hmm. you, you become bitter, right? It's a transfer of poison, yeah. you poison me with your negativity and your wrongdoings and then I'm bitter so I poison you back oh, by blaming yeah. you and yes. because I'm blaming you, you lash back at yeah. me, it's an exchange of poison. And to the other person, yeah. and to the other person. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it hurts people, true, hurt yeah. people because, yeah. because that's the truth. And Again, always remember that forgiveness is about liberating yourself. Mm -hmm. So either you get that apology or you're not getting that apology. Mm -hmm. It does. It matters, but sometimes yeah. it doesn't matter for you because the point is you need to liberate yourself. Yeah. You yeah. may not get that apology until the end of your life. Yeah. And remember, people who are in pain usually want to relieve themselves of the poison. That's why they give it to other people. But in the oh, process, yeah. it's your it's your choice whether you want to take that poison yes. or let it stop right there. Yeah. 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 Who's you know? gonna break the cycle? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like who's way gonna of, let's stop yeah. it where it is? Yeah. 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 But I, I think it does take a lot of understanding mm -hmm. of other people it does. And, a, and a bigger empathy yeah. of mm -hmm. understanding yeah. why people hurt other people. Why did people hurt me? And the more we get there and the more we, we learn about that, I think the more we're able to, yeah, really forgive, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. and really let go. Yeah. Really and unload, and yeah. to sum it up, it's not like I had the whole nation say sorry for making fun of your accent. <laughs> but what I realized, and this is how I put it into perspective, so many people in the world, in this country, around me, must be going through so much yes. to the point where the only way they could feel joy or relief is by mocking other people. And I feel bad for them. Yeah. And you know, now it's up to me to realize that. And I'm not gonna get an apology from those yes. people, mm. but let it be because yeah. um, that's something they have to work on. Yeah. That's a, a growth they have to um, experience on their own. Mm -hmm. And all I can do is realize the situation from their standpoint yeah. and then continue to move forward in my life and execute you know the mission that i have for myself yes mm. yeah because yeah. what they think that don't matter they're not you know they're not the one feeding me they're not the one providing me with <laughs> shelter yes. like yes yes i need to make sure that i can just continue to be a positive role model yeah and that is not yes. by harboring hate in my heart true i i, yeah. I love, I love how you how you put yeah. put that in yeah. oh that's that's a really great way to sum it all up once again, Chinta, <laughs> I mean, like, really, thank you thank for, you. you know, thank you for being so candid with us today and it's such yes. a rare opportunity, such a joy to have you with us yes, and, and, really and to share yeah. so many tears and stories yeah. together. <laughs> Have a good girl's time. And yeah, all the best so nice. for your new YouTube channel yeah. and yeah. For, your, for your talk show and for your book. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Surat Dari Cinta. Surat Dari Cinta. It's going to be a whole book. Yes. But it's not. Book. Oh, but we can follow your Instagram first. Yeah. Yeah. Surat Dari Cinta. Maybe Surat I, should you, yes. I should share with you my story. Yeah, you can. Write in and share Absolutely. you my story. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I'm very Bully. looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. And I hope through our conversation today, many people will find it within yes. themselves to forgive and yes. also realize that it's a choice in order to, you know, find peace and happiness yeah, within. Yes, and we really wish this for all of our audience, that yeah. you can find your biggest potential. You can live mm -hmm. out that calling that you have in your heart. Mm -hmm. You can grow bigger than yourself and right. don't just circle around the bitterness that might have happened in the past and you can move forward. We want to send you a lot of love and light. Till next time at the Powder Room. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I was like,